Hi, my name's Craig and I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. And today I wanted to cover off one of our apps called Hyper Data Protector or HDP for short. Um, this is an application that allows you to back up uh, hypervisor environments uh, such as VMware or Hyper-V. Um, I've got a, a small VMware home lab set up here that I'm going to uh, illustrate how to configure it and how to set it up. Um, it does have a dependent app, so when you install it on a QNAP, if you don't already have Container Station installed, it will prompt you that that needs installing first. Um, so installing it is simply a case of coming into the App Center, uh, go to the QTS Essentials tab. You can do Container Station first if you wish, uh, or you can just straight away go to Hyper Data Protector and it will install both of them for you with, with Container Station happening first. Um, another step I like to do uh, before I configure anything in Hyper Data Protector is I usually go into my storage and I will create a dedicated uh, uh, pool or volume uh, for the Hyper Data Protector data. Uh, so in my case here, I've got one down here called HDP, which is a thick shared folder at 20 terabytes in my storage pool too. Um, I've also got a secondary one, which I'm not really using, but I've got one there for data, which is a bit bigger at 50 terabytes, which is a thin volume. Um, but I've got those both added into Hyper Data Protector as destinations for, for backup jobs to complete to. Um, so when you open up Hyper Data Protector, it opens it up in a new browser window. You do have to authenticate again to get into here. So the, the admin username and password will get you into here. And we can see that I've got a uh, 20 items protected uh, for VMware. I uh, don't have Hyper-V running, so that's got zero at the moment. But we can see from the calendar view that I've got backups since the 15th, which is when I set this up. Um, and I've got lots of different jobs backing up different things that I've got running all my Windows VMs, Linux ones, vCenter server itself so that vSphere works. Uh, we've got a QCenter VM, um, quite a few QUTS cloud virtual machines as well, um, and some, some different options in there. So this is, this is just showing me the summary of how everything's set up. Um, the first thing you have to do when you open up Hyper Data Protector is allocate a repository space. So this is effectively where the data gets stored once the backup jobs are complete. These are the choices that you will get um, as destinations for that backup data. So we can see here that repository one, um, has a 616 gig backup file, which is uh, the 20 items that I've got protected. Uh, so that's all done into this folder here. So once you've created a, a backup repository, which is just add the repository, browse to the location that you want it. Um, so you won't see the ones that I've got selected, the data and the HTTP one, they're already taken, but you would just select which one you want. Uh, click select. On the next page, you can choose whether or not you want to turn on data deduplication, compression, um, or encryption as well for that folder. I won't add any more now, but that's what you do. You simply click add and it will appear in the list here with a quick summary of it. And you can always go in and change the settings later on the right hand side. Uh, the next step is to add an inventory. So the inventory is uh, a choice of what you can select uh, to do the backups from. Um, so in my case, I've got the VMware uh, home lab that I've got here set up, which is three hosts. There's 23 VMs. Uh, three of those are just the VCLS VLMs that VMware uses to manage the uh, DRS and HA stuff between the, the two different, uh, through the three different hosts. Uh, so I haven't backed those three up. So uh, that's why I've only got 20 protected items that I showed you on the previous screen. It gives you a version of your inventory um, and you can simply add inventories up here. So you can choose VMware or Hyper-V, whichever you choose. You can click add new inventory, just authenticate. As soon as you've done that, it will refresh itself and it will populate the list over here with um, all the different items that you've got. Um, and you can always go in and edit these settings if you ever wanted to later, you can change those around. Um, you can also refresh it. So if you've added um, an extra VM into your VMware environment, um, it will only periodically check to see that. So if you want to add a job with some more VMs, so if so you've added another three VMs and this should say 26, you can just click refresh here and it will refresh and go uh, re-authenticate with your uh, vCenter server in this case to download the latest list of VMs for the inventory. Uh, so once you've got the repository and inventory set up, what you can then do is create a backup job. So within backups here, you've got a create job option at the top. Um, once you've created a backup job, you get a nice little summary of the different items that appears here. So if I was to go down to QUTS Cloud, there's the 10 QUTS Cloud instances that I'm running. Um, they all appear here and it's telling me where they've gone to and the total size they took. Uh, but if we were to create a job, we can call the job whatever we need. So we can say YouTube, let's say. Um, so here the source, it's going to pop up um, your options for your inventories that you've added. So you can add both VMware and the Hyper-V and have backups going at the same time. Uh, click next. 
And then it's going to give you the structured layout of how your cluster looks or your individual hosts. So you can click refresh here as well if you want to see if there's any new hosts or if the hosts have moved around between, uh, sorry, the VMs have moved around between the different hosts. So we can go through there. And if we wanted to say back up one of our Ubuntu VMs here, we can just tick that. And uh, it's already got a shield, it already is backed up, but we can select it again. And then we pick the destination. So you've got your two repositories. One of mine does have uh, data deduplication enabled, um, both have compression. So we can just select which one we want to send the data to. Uh, click next. And now you can create a schedule. So you can have it run after another job that you may already have, or you can set up its own schedule as well. So in the scheduler, you've got options to just add different items. So maybe daily at midnight, you want it to do a backup job. So you can set that up and add that schedule in if you, if you want to. Uh, so there's the, the schedule that's done. So we'll click next. Now you get to choose whether you want um, encryption, uh, compression, different items like that. Um, you've also got the option for VMware CBT, which is generally recommended um, uh, to do backups of different VMs. And you've got application aware processing as an option as well. So if you've got different items, uh, it's basically like Microsoft uh, volume shadow copies so that if you've got Windows VMs and things, it will um, prevent data loss. So we'll click next, and then you can simply just hit backup. So the first time you create a job, it will run the backup. Um, and then after the, the job's been done, it will then start creating um, different uh, uh, backups based off the, uh, the schedules that you've set. Uh, so there, that's going to tell me that I'm doing Ubuntu one, and it's going to go to repository one. So that's all queued in there. So we can go over here and just wait for it to do the run uh, of this. It shouldn't take very long. It's not a big file, so that it's already transferring some data in. Uh, so just while it's doing this, I'll give you a summary of the uh, the VMware environment that I've got. So here is the uh, three hosts that I've got running with all the separate VMs. Um, so the only ones that I'm not backing up, if I go to the VM view, are these VCLS ones here. Just no need to back those ones up. So I'm just backing up everything else in the list. Um, all the QUTS cloud ones are there. So everything else is backing up uh, from, from within here. So if I go back over here, um, so we can see that the storage inside each of these hosts, none of the hosts that I'm running have internal drives. Um, all of the storage is held on some of the different NAS that I've got. So I've usually got um, iSCSI LUNs connected uh, to some different NAS. So I'm, I'm effectively backing up data where the VMs are running from my TS983XU-RP uh, with some NVMEs installed. All the backup data is coming from there and across. And we can see down here um, that the snapshot has now been removed. So that the HDP, the hybrid, uh, sorry, the hyper data protector created a, a virtual machine snapshot um, to start the backup. So we can see that that happened about a minute ago. And then once the backup's complete, it removes that snapshot from uh, the VMware environment because the data is now backed up. So if I was to switch back to hyper data protector, we can see that that's all backed up. Absolutely successful, no problems there. Oh, timed out, needed me to log in again. So if I log in here and go back to the uh, the backup view, go to the, the jobs and click report, we can see that everything was successful. The backup happened, no problems whatsoever. Everything was okay. If we want to download a status report of that job, we can download that down here as well so that we can have some information to file away if we need to. Gives you the actual path that the data was sent to. Uh, ZFS is uh, the option here because this is a NAS based on our QUTS hero. Um, so that's uh, how you do backup. So what we'll do now is we'll restore one of the virtual machines. So here, if we click Create Job, we've got Restore 1 as the default name. I'll just leave it for that for now. We'll click Select Source. Uh, we can choose the YouTube one that we just did in a minute. But if we go look at one of the other jobs that's got a, a few more days on it, you can see that you've got a different timeline. So you can roll back the virtual machine to any point in time that you want. Uh, but let's do it from the one we just created. So we'll click Next. There's only one backup that we just did. Uh, so we'll click on that one. We'll say we're going to restore Ubuntu one. We'll click next. We'll click next. So now we get to create a schedule. I'm not going to create a schedule. It's a one-off restore. We'll click next. So overwrite overwrites the source VM, basically puts it back uh, where it was backed up from, but um, overwrites it back to a different point in time and rename um, adds something to the end of it. So we'll do that one. So this is going to uh, add the word dash recovered to the end. It's going to give it a new MAC address so that if we want to power it up alongside the current one, it's going to make sure they don't conflict with each other. I'll untick encryption just to make it a bit quicker. And we can automatically start the restored VMs there. 
So that's telling me what's going to happen. It's going to transfer it across from the H1288X to the 983XU um, back into my VMware environment. And all the settings are good, so we'll click Restore. Okay, so that's now going to go off and run, and it should appear inside our um, vCenter server view in a moment uh, so that we can see that it's uh, added with the dash recovered options there. So here we go, we can see that it's deploying the OVF template of the backup job with Ubuntu 1 dash recovered. So we'll just wait for that job to complete. So nearly there, 99%. There, we've got it in the list now. So as soon as it's finished, it should automatically start up that VM and it'll be able to run happily alongside the Ubuntu One virtual machine uh, because it has a different um, a different MAC address there. There we go, powered on the virtual machine automatically. So that's now done a full restore of that virtual machine in no time at all. Okay. So that was a Hyper Data Protector. Um, that's how you would uh, back up any virtual infrastructure that you have that's based off um, VMware or with uh, Hyper-V. Uh, very easy to set up, very easy to configure. Um, you get a very nice uh, pane here overview of, of what the situation is of all the different jobs that you've got, um, all the different backup um, activity that you've had within your environment. Um, and it also tells you uh, how protected you are. So when you click into your inventory, you can see how backed up uh, your, your inventory is there. So uh, as I said earlier, I've got three unprotected items because they're just the VCLS um, little mini VMs that uh, VMware uses to maintain the cluster. Okay, hopefully you found that useful. If anybody does have any questions, uh, please do ask them below. We're pretty fast at responding. Um, again, this software is Hyper Data Protector. Um, it is completely free of charge if your QNAP supports running it. Um, so that's really any of the, the NAS that have um, an Intel or an AMD processor, and you do need container station installed uh, to be able to run Hyper Data Protector. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks. Bye.